I wrote a, uh, a book called Negotiating with the Savvy Buyer. Uh, it is based on the idea that when you think you're done with the sales cycle, oftentimes that's the point at which the most difficult thing is about to occur and you're up against a trained, savvy software buyer. And uh, so in that book, what I'm trying to do is, is help everybody kind of read the buyer's handbook, get an understanding of what they're going to do. Why is it there are three professions, uh, soldiers, athletes, and salespeople who all seem to mean need external uh, motivation? Indeed, leading and managing and developing salespeople is not about leading and managing people in a generic or typical sense. It is more like leading and developing athletes or soldiers, and the sales star model is a representation of the five dimensions of um, what it takes to make that happen. The top point, uh, and the most important, is morale. Morale makes you or breaks you. And as I talk to some of the top most successful people in technology, I'm not a touchy-feely kind of guy. But I, I notice that top performers tend to be very tuned to their morale and taking personal ownership for their morale. Number two is, uh, is beliefs. Where our beliefs are a little out of line with reality, it's very hard to let them go. But the magical thing is, if we all of a sudden have that epiphany, and there's a word for that in every language of the world, where we have this sudden, sometimes gut-wrenching realization that our current belief was wrong, and indeed, there is a new belief that we should accept. It's painful, but our performance, since our actions are a manifestation of our beliefs, our performance can instantly, almost magically, get better. And then the point on which most sales managers tend to manage is the third, which is activity. Many sales managers at the end of the quarter manage only on the activity dimension. And they say things like, the forecast isn't where it needs to be. We don't have enough deals in the pipeline. In doing that, they almost seem a little bewildered in the face of the circumstances or panicky themselves. They are negatively impacting the morale point as they are trying to improve sales performance and doing more harm than good. The fourth point is uh, ability. Most people come to me for techniques and training and working on ability. If your only focus is simply on ability and techniques and process, that is only one of the five dimensions and uh, it, it simply isn't enough to make you successful as a salesperson. And then finally, uh, the fifth point, uh, and certainly not the least important point, is style. If you're an accountant, you could do a good job of accounting. You might argue that style doesn't matter. As an engineer, style doesn't matter. But as a salesperson, they get on the phone. A very successful telesales person once said to me, I mean, as soon as you get somebody on the phone, you can sense their well-being or their lack thereof instantly. So, your vocal persona, how you carry yourself, how you project yourself is going to make you or break you in sales. And if I'm a salesperson, I need to think about developing all the dimensions and I can't ignore one because they're also a bit like links in a chain, one weak link and it breaks. And if I'm a sales leader, I should carry that model in my head and I should always think about every interaction and I should think about how I'm impacting all five of those dimensions. Your morale is driven primarily as a salesperson by how you profoundly and deeply feel about three things. And the first and most important thing is, is you yourself, your sense of self-worth, or two, how you feel about your company. Some aspect of the company changes that, that seems good or bad. Your boss changes, your territory changes, your comp plan changes, the IPO floats or it doesn't float. And, and the third, I'm going to say, is your opportunity. In other words, as you look at what you sell, is there a ready market out there or is it, you know, a tough, competitive, kind of price-driven market? When you put those three things together, if your sense of self-worth is scale of one to 10 is a 10, if you love the company and you see just boundless opportunity, then your morale is, is going to be where you want it to be. The way I think to make sure your self-talk is positive is to practice that in the moment. One of the things I do uh, is I, I force myself to be successful and do the thing I don't want to do by providing written instructions to myself. So having something in front of you at the moment where you're under duress, 
under those moments, you're going to tend to revert to habit and instinct. That's what all humans do. But I find if I have a written instruction in front of me, it will cause me to do the thing that I, I want to do. And when you do it, and when you have success, all of a sudden, now the next time your self-talk is, you've been here before. You've done this. 